All right. So up to now, we've been talking about Millikan, and he had the charge of suspended periodic equation. This meant that the forces were balanced, right? In fact, you could say that means that the the net force is zero, right? The electric force up and the weight force down are equal to each other, and the net force is zero. So then the question is, what if they're not balanced? Well, if they're not balanced, there will be a net force on the charge, which will cause an acceleration, either up or down, depending on which way the net force is, right? Okay. So using this net force and acceleration, we can solve problems for motion with the field. In fact, you can find the acceleration, you can find the distance traveled in a certain amount of time, Okay, this is basically exactly the same thing as, right, when you've got an applied force and a friction force horizontally, right, except it's up and down. In fact, you could also argue it's no different than up and down, it's weight force and air resistance up, right? See how these things keep coming back? Nothing's new, it's just recycled, it's like song. There's no new song, it's just recycled. Uh, that's not true. Okay, so but that's the idea. Now, blah 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 blah. Don't worry about this. I've never bothered. Yeah, that's just a big waste of time, right? Um, I've talked about how the field strength is greater on the inside, right? It's kind of like because there's like there's field lines from the top as well as field lines from the bottom, but there is some um, some bending at the side because oops which we're, not, we're just going to ignore. Basically, what I want you to know is that the field strength is uniform throughout the in-between. When I say uniform, I mean it's the same everywhere. Okay, that's all I need you to know. The field strength is uniform throughout the center. See? You didn't need to write any of that down. That would have been like 25 minutes, a big waste of time. That's it. That's just sort of the preamble, right? Okay, so now we can, like Colin said, now we can actually do some problems with it, right? Okay, so how about I start you off with an easy one? I don't think so. Now I've given you lots of room to work here. So another one says a 1.0 times 10 to the minus 4 kilogram charge of 3.2 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs is dropped in an electric field. So this is the... It doesn't come right out and say it, but that is the mass. And how do I know? It's in kilograms. It's in kilograms. Good old metric kilograms of 3.2 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. That is the charge, Q. The plates are 1.5 centimeters apart. That is the, the displacement, or the D. Notice that it's in centimeters. The electric field strength is, that is the... E, determine the net force on the object. Hmm. Well, all we need is the net force. Right? You can get to net force two ways, through adding up forces, or you can get it from acceleration and then the kinematics. But we don't know any of that stuff. We only know forces, really, right? Yeah. Shall we start with the gravitational force? That's usually a good place to start with, right? quite often gets you one mark. 1.0 times 10 to the minus 4 times minus 9.8. Say again. I get 9. Oh, I can do this in my head. What am I doing? It's 1 minus 9.8 times 10 to the minus 4. Newtons. Well, it's, it's 1 times minus 9.8. Yes, I'm a mathematical genius, Carl. So we've got this weight force down, we've got an electric force up, but we don't know that. Determine the net force in the object. So to get the net force, I'm going to need to know what Fe is, right? To get Fe, I need Q and E. Do I have Q and E? I do. Now, I haven't shown you this. I think I wrote it on the board once, but usually, don't write this down, usually I write E equals F over Q, right? If you want, like in a situation like this, you can just write Fe is Q times E. Okay, all I did there was do what? 
Rearrange the format. That's all I did. Charge is 3.2 times 10 to the minus 19. Our E value is 1 times 10 to the 15. 3.2 times 10 to the minus 4. All things we've done up to now, right? Okay, now I will tell you this. Usually, those two values should be in the same ballpark or the, have the same order of magnitude. In other words, the exponents should likely be the same, right? Because if one is like 3.2 times 10 to the 17 and the other is 9.8 times 10 to the minus 4, which one is like ridiculously bigger? The 17, right? It would be like literally a drop in the ocean. Okay, so they should be either equal or maybe on one side or the other, right? Like this could be minus 5 or it could be minus 3. And it's at least in the sort of the same district, ballpark, postal code as I like to say. Okay, so now what is the net force? Well, it is made up of all the forces that are acting. So in this case, it's the wave force plus the electric force. Now, does the fact that one is negative matter? It certainly does, because you're adding them, right? You're adding them together in the direction. It's like the direction. It's like adding north and east. So minus 9.8 times 10 to the minus 4, plus electric force of 3.2 times 10 to the minus 4, and you get Minus 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus 4 newtons. <coughs> so again, these are things we've done already, right? We've done, we've certainly done this, we've certainly done this, and you've certainly added two forces together. It's just a new situation of old things you've done before. It's like playing basketball in a gym you've never been in. Right? The basket's still 10 feet and you can still make them. No different. True enough. That's it. Why did I throw in the 1.5 centimeters? To remind you that sometimes they do jerkish things like that. Did we use the 1.5 centimeters? No, this is people. This is people? People. Uh, Other people. Okay. Not me. Yeah. Do you think you can do this one? You've got a mass. You've got a charge. You've got an electric field strength. Determine the net acceleration of the object and how fast is it traveling after 1.5 seconds and how far will it have fallen in this time? Is this number two, actually? Yeah. Okay. I'll tell you this. One, two, three, four, five, six steps. All things you've done, I'll let you try it. And here we go.
you get that far? Yeah. Okay, so that's the weight force and the electric force, and then you add them together to get the net force. Okay, and then next step, I guess, I don't know why I always put that in the middle, just waste space. Yeah. Hang on. I'm gonna do that next. You should because that is telling us that this drop is going down. Yeah, so you should. Okay, so now how far is it traveling at? Oh, so how fast is it traveling after 1.5 seconds? So now this is kinematics review, right? Yeah. So you guys want to review, it's right here. No, it's not times 10, is it? It's just minus 3.35. Second, time of 1.5 seconds. Minus 5.03 meters per second. Yeah, that's fine. That's pretty close, yeah. Right? <laughs> Since the VI is zero, then these are equal, right? Right. And is that the answer for that mm. second part? Like that is the answer for the second part, how fast it's traveling, yep. Yeah. And then C, I guess we could say. You have to know the average velocity oh I screwed up no I didn't I just don't have this answer. How do I not have this answer? It's rather large. That's why I thought I might have that. No, you're What do you think?
Am I right so far? That's F E. You're right, am I right with these numbers? Okay, so then you take the 5.19 to the other side and you're adding it. Yeah, so positive 5.19 times 10 to the minus 5 minus 7, 1.22 times 10 to the minus 4. So I'm going to do that again. 5.19 exponent negative 5. Oh. What did you guys get? So you had 5.19 exponent negative 5, right? Minus 1.22 exponent negative 4. I still get 7.01. No! How do you get a, a more of a negative if you're minusing? Minusing? Okay, so it's going to be 5.19 times 10 to the minus 5. Yeah. Subtract 1.22 times 10 to the minus 4. Right? Yeah. Why? It's 4 right there. Okay. Oh. Maybe that should be a minus 5. That does seem right. Yeah, that should be minus 5. You're right. So that would make it considerably different, wouldn't it? Yeah. This is why it takes so long for me to mark, because i got to find mistakes that you guys make like that. Oh, yeah, let's try that again. <laughs> yep. 3.97 times 10 to the minus? 5. Okay. Now, once we've got that, we're going to go FE is equal to QE. So 3.97 times 10 to the minus 5 is equal to Q. The E value is 8.28 times 10 to the 13. You're going to divide, right? No. Four point eight times ten to the minus nineteen? That's what Daniela had, I know. So now you're going to go one elch is one point six times ten to the minus nineteen. So how many elches is four point eight times ten to the minus nineteen? And you're going to divide. And you're gonna get 
Three Beltrix. You can go three times ten to the zero, I guess. Minus thirty? You, well, you, one of these isn't negative if you did that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. You went times 10 to the 19. Yeah. Your value in Alchus should, should be an integer, a whole number, or pretty, pretty close. Now, obviously, you're going to do a little bit of some rounding somewhere. I did a little bit of rounding to make sure that I got to exactly three, but it should work out to that. Is that the right answer, or that's the right? Okay. So, not too bad. Um, on the back there, you've got there's seven, seven practice problems. Thank you for your attention today. That is literally all I have. I got another card, a little, oh, I got another speed test for you. But I'm not going to hand that out today because I know what happens. But if you didn't do speed test number one, yeah. You need to get it. Let me just go see who hasn't gotten that in. Oh, it was.